The Louisiana Department of Health is releasing the latest coronavirus numbers right now. We'll get you that in just a moment. But first, Governor John Bell Edwards says that Louisiana is no longer on track to run out of ventilators this week, which is a sign of good news for the state. The stay at home order is still in effect through April 30th here in Louisiana. In the meantime, the CDC is considering changing its guidelines to allow he healthy asymptomatic people to return to work in critical jobs. Under the proposed guidance, people who are exposed to someone infected would be allowed back on the job if they're asymptomatic, test their temperature twice a day, and wear a face mask. We could find out more about this as early as today from the CDC and the White House Coronavirus Task Force. We've been hearing from national, state, and local leaders that this week and next week will be the toughest for the coronavirus pandemic here in the United States. In an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the U.S. Surgeon General this morning, our Katie Moore asked him if that's still the case. I know that over the weekend you mentioned uh, that Louisiana in particular and New York could expect a Pearl Harbor type week. Are we seeing that come to fruition? Well, we're seeing uh, both of these two areas reaching their peak number of deaths each day, more deaths than, uh, than previously uh, before. And so it's a somber time. But uh, what I think is important and what people didn't report is that uh, I also said that it was a time for America to come together. We know after Pearl Harbor, uh, the country really galvanized and, uh, and Rosie the Riveter, uh, people doing all, buying bonds, doing their part to really support the effort. And what we really need in, in New Orleans, uh, in Louisiana, all across the country, is for people to do their part by staying at home. Look for more of Katie's exclusive interview on later newscasts and at WWLTV.com. Well, food insecurity was already a problem in our community, but as this pandemic continues, food banks say they're seeing more of a need now. Our Megan Key is live in Mid-City outside of Goodwill, where a food pantry drive through just wrapped up a few hours ago. Megan. Yes, you know, the need is definitely here. Second Harvest Food Bank, Goodwill, and Councilman Jay Banks, they all prepared 500 boxes of food to give out to people in the community. Now, this drive through food pantry was slated to last from 9 a.m. until noon, but it wrapped up after just an hour. That's how great the need was. And you're seeing behind me that people are still here. They're still pulling up right now looking for those boxes of food. People lined up in their cars 30 minutes before the food pantry drive through even started. The line spanning down the street. When a car would pull up to the front, volunteers with masks on their face would load up the car, making sure no one got out of their vehicle. Second Harvest donated all of the food that filled up the 500 boxes. Each box contained groceries like canned meat, pasta, and fresh produce, and was packaged to feed a family of four over several days. The president and CEO of Second Harvest Food Bank says resources are scarcer than they'd normally be, but donations are helping. When you think about what's happening at Second Harvest right now, think about what's happening at your grocery stores because a third of our food comes from those stores. And since their shelves are bare, the food bank's bare of those canned items, but the restaurants are not full. So the fresh produce and things that normally you would see being cooked in our restaurants, a lot of that is being donated to us. It's really healthy food, so we're happy to be able to get it out to people. In New Orleans, we are all one. So these people were like family, coming to their family for help. And it was just truly, it was exciting to see the, the gratitude. Well, tomorrow, Council Member Kristen Palmer and Second Harvest Food Bank will hold another food pantry drive through in the seventh ward. That's going to be at Holy Angels Apartments off St. Claude. Now, that's slated to happen from 9 a.m. until noon, and um, they're expecting to give out hundreds of boxes of food. Reporting live in Mid City, Megan Key, Eyewitness News. That's wonderful. Thank you, Megan. The latest numbers from the Louisiana Department of Health are now in. There are now 17,030 confirmed cases of coronavirus in the state. The state also reported 652 deaths. That's 70 more than yesterday. 1,983 people have been hospitalized because of COVID-19. 490 of those are on ventilators right now. Well, a local businessman is trying a different venture to make ends meet. He's transformed a warehouse that houses limousines to one now holding cleaning supplies. Duke Carter was in Chalmette this morning, showing us how the business is helping the community.
Before the shop opened, there were already people waiting in line to get their hand sanitizer and cleaning supplies. And the owner of Recall Fee Livery, which is a limousine service, says he's given away over 300 bottles. The owner of Recall Fee Livery, which is a limousine service, said around the beginning of March is when he started to notice people canceling their reservations. He called it a nightmare because without any reservations, he's pretty much unemployed. Well, Recall Fee teamed up with rapper Master P to open Master Clean Life, which is a service founded by Master P's sons, Hersey and Mercy Miller. Well, what they're doing right now is that they're handing out hand sanitizer and cleaning supplies just for the elderly. And again, the goal right now is to make sure the community is safe during the coronavirus outbreak. We're giving back and we're also doing something to occupy our time in regards to everything that's going on. You know, I mean, as of now, we're kind of unemployed, so this is a great way to actually give back and also recoup something in return. Everything they're doing, from what I see, is real beneficial for all of us because this is something we ain't never seen in, in, in the history of the earth or in mankind, period. You know, and so this is new to us. If seniors over 60 can get cleaning supplies and hand sanitizers for free, they just have to show proper identification. For now, reporting, Duke Carter, Eyewitness News. Duke, thank you. As we mentioned at the top of the newscast, the CDC is expected to change its guidelines for workers in critical jobs to return to work. And at the same time, the Trump administration is asking for more money to help small businesses during this crisis. CBS's Skylar Henry has the story from the White House. The CDC is expected to change its guidelines for workers in critical jobs if they don't show signs of the coronavirus. If you're in a work situation where you have to be, there'll be a series of recommendations that if you had had a significant exposure, of what specifically to do and if you've had a less exposure what to do. Under the anticipated new guidance, people who are exposed to an infected person would be allowed back on the job if they're asymptomatic, test their temperature twice a day and wear a face mask. It's a very important piece because it looks at um, degree of exposure and really making it clear that exposure occurs within six feet for more than 15 minutes. Vice President Mike Pence is holding calls with both Republicans and Democrats in the House today to discuss the administration's response to COVID-19. The administration is asking Congress for an additional $250 billion this week for loans to small businesses through the very popular Paycheck Protection Program. This is much needed support and we want to make sure that every single small business can participate. Meantime, President Trump is shifting blame for the spread of the coronavirus to the World Health Organization, saying it should have provided better warnings. They call it wrong. They really, they missed the call. The president is threatening to pull U.S. funding from the U.N. agency. The organization labeled coronavirus a global health emergency in January. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. And on Wall Street today, stocks opened in higher territory this morning as investors eye pandemic developments and right now the Dow is up 580 points. Well, the Chinese city where the coronavirus began ended its more than two month lockdown. Masked crowds filled airports, train stations and streets in Wuhan as the city of 11 million reopened to travelers. The former epicenter of the outbreak celebrated with a massive light show last night. In recent weeks, the country has reported nearly zero new local infections. During the outbreak, Wuhan reported more than 50,000 infections and more than 2,500 deaths. An update now on British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who was diagnosed with coronavirus. A spokesperson says he is, quote, responding to treatment, but he does remain in the ICU right now. He's been in the ICU the last two nights at St. Thomas Hospital in London. He's receiving standard oxygen treatment and is breathing without any other assistance. 